I wanted to make this video to let everyone know that there is actually a fantastic Soto Zen Buddhist monastery in England on the border of Scotland called Throssell Hall Buddhist Abbey and if you needed to get away from society and really turn inwards and explore yourself through Zen meditation it's a fantastic place to go and deepen your practice to learn more about Zen Buddhism and to perhaps seek counsel from the monks that live and practice in the monastery. I can honestly say in my 35 years on the planet that the monks I spoke to at Throssell Hole are the wisest people I've ever encountered. They certainly gave that impression. And if I asked them advice, their advice would always be very down to earth and very reasonable and clearly perhaps you could say lacking in the uh, contamination or corruption of self-interest that often does get in the way of good advice seeking. Usually, for example, they would just tell me to sit with my feelings and be patient with them, be mindful of how I was feeding them or something like that. In any case, I have uh, still, even 10 years later, uh, having not really visited or had much to do with the Buddhist community, a great respect and gratitude for the monks of Throssell Hall. Throssell Hall is a member of the Order of Buddhist Contemplatives. They also have a place in uh, California at Mount Shasta. So I can only assume that if you're based in America, the monastery there is also quite excellent. In the UK-based monastery, Throssell Hall, you're generally welcome, I think, to stay there uh, if you ask permission as a guest for a number of months without much problem. I stayed for three months on one occasion and then a few years later stayed again for three months throughout the summer training period. And in the summer training period, once a month there is a week whereby you have a sashin. And a sashin is a, a week of intensive meditation. So on a normal day in the monastery, if I remember correctly, we do about four, uh, maybe three or four hours meditation, usually in blocks of 45 minutes. And in the sashin, it's more like seven or eight hours meditation. So it is certainly the most I ever uh, meditated in, uh, in my life. I don't meditate as much now. I still try to do half an hour each morning. I suppose a common question uh, that people might have about Throssell and staying in the monastery is how much does it cost and do they charge for their services and the monks actually offer the teachings absolutely freely. They work on a suggested donation basis and I can tell you as a matter of fact in the six months total that I stayed in the monastery the issue of money was never raised once by a monk. I was never asked for a donation. It was never discussed. There is a box where you can uh, drop your donation uh, down, you know, in the common area, and it's just there. It's just not an issue. And yeah, I suppose that does help to create a certain trust. You know, it's not about the money essentially, is they live to offer the teachings. They, they take a vow called the Bodhisattva vow. And the Bodhisattva vow is pretty much the most epic possible vow that you could ever conceive of. It's a vow that even though the amount of suffering in the universe is endless, one will strive to end it all. And even though the number of sentient beings in the universe is limitless, one will strive to liberate them all. And when you're dealing with people such as the monks who have taken this vow, they've taken precepts against causing harm, and they've essentially dedicated their life to the pursuit of truth and the end of suffering, I have to say it does encourage me to trust them more than I really trust anyone else. If I really needed spiritual counsel in my life, 
they are the ones I would turn to because it seems that in conventional life, when you ask people for advice, they generally give advice based around the decisions they have made in a way of trying to reinforce their insecurities around having made them. It's really not about you. It's not about reducing your suffering, for example. Often it's plain about instrumentalizing you towards a particular end. And uh, yeah, in terms of people I would trust for advice, there are none that I would trust more than the monks of Throsselhole Buddhist Abbey. Uh, and in particular, there is a monk there called Reverend Master Ulwin, who became a monk very early in life against her parents' wishes, as I understand it. And she was the one who taught me Zen meditation when I was about 20 years old, living in Reading, where I went to university. And in Reading, they have a, a priory run by the same organization, but you're, it's non-residential, you can't stay there, but they do meditation nights twice a week. And that was when I was really formally introduced to Zen Buddhist practice. I'd read a great deal about it before, and it's always been a tradition that's appealed to me. The, uh, the, the philosophy always seems to just be true as far as I can see it and, and very sensible in a way. It's kind of in line with some of the intuitions I've always had about the pursuit of truth in terms of removing constructs that other people put on you. And I think for me, I've always struggled with the so-called life plan or life script that we're given in modern British society which can be summarized with the three words mortgage, marriage, reproduction. That is not something I can be at peace with. And so knowing that I had an option, uh, an alternative way of living, which meant that I didn't have to do those things and didn't have to play the games of society, that I could essentially step outside of the social status game has been really incredibly important to me, and, and still is, really. I know that if everything in my life got too bad, too difficult, I could go to the monastery and live there, but potentially even become a monk, which perhaps one day I might still do. And I know that's a strange thing to say, but I still see it as a very real possibility in my life that I might become a monk one day when I'm ready to. When I was younger, I essentially concluded that I wasn't ready to. I great, you know, gained great benefit from the practice. And when I entered the monastery, my mind was clouded with very, very negative thinking. And by the time I left the monastery, I had essentially been successfully brainwashed. I had had my mind cleaned um, by these diligent mind cleaners that are the Buddhist monks, and I really found my patterns of thought to be much more positive and my ability to reconnect with my body and my feelings and the present moment of what is offered in the present moment uh, was greatly enhanced. So. It was of great benefit to me, um, of course not implying that it would be of great benefit to everyone or uh, trying to advocate this as some absolute answer. But I know that some of you listening to this will be kindred spirits and not particularly feel that you belong in this society and, like me, find great comfort in the knowledge that there is a place where you can go and, uh, as I said before, turn inwards, look deeply into the nature of existence and being, being dedicated to the pursuit of truth and the reduction of suffering. And even when I was a child, it did strike me that the two basic goals of monks, pursuing the truth and reducing suffering, the suffering that we create for ourselves psychologically, was simply a very sensible use of one's life and uh, did help one to avoid the basic 
follies and delusions of conventional modern life. So, there is an option for you and for me in the form of Throstle Hall Buddhist Monastery in the north of England. And they have a website, do check it out. You can download a fantastic free book about Zen Buddhist meditation called Sitting Buddha, which is written by the now ex abbot Unfortunately, I think he has uh, entered a period of poor health, and there's a new abbot now. Uh, it might even be Reverend Master Alwyn, actually. I think I heard, but anyway. Anyway, that's the end of my rambling about Throstlehold Buddhist Abbey. As some of you know about my videos, I'm usually... Uh, pretty good at spotting bullshit and seeing the negative in things and I honestly have not a bad word to say about either Throstle Hole Monastery or the monks who practice there. I, I really thoroughly recommend it to anyone who wants to deepen their practice in Buddhism and especially in Zen Buddhism.